Hello there, and welcome to The Meaningful Stitch. This is episode 35, and I am Amy Palco, and I'm coming to you from Edinburgh, Scotland. And this is my digital home from home, a place where I get to share with you my knitting practice and my knitting projects, of which this time there are many. <laughs> December has been such a busy, busy month that I unfortunately have not managed to record until this moment, and we are recording on the 30th of December, so we're right at the very tippy end. But I really wanted to get one more episode in before the end of the year. So here we are. I have a lot of knitting to share with you, quite a few finished objects, a couple of works in progress. There's quite a lot of uh, in the section called new to me, <laughs> yarns and books. And, uh, and then we're going to finish up with what's been bringing me joy. Uh, but before we get to all of that, we've got a couple of bits of admin to get through. The show notes uh, for this episode are all available in the description box below. However, if you click through to the Patreon link that's there, then you'll be able to see the show notes with lots of images and uh, extra links and things, because I have a lot more space over there. And that's free to access. That's not behind a paywall. If you would like to support the channel, then you can absolutely subscribe to my Patreon. And I also have a Ko-Fi link, which is also linked below. I do have some Patreon news, but I will share that a little bit later. So only other thing to say is to like the video, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and yeah, always choose to leave a comment because I love to read your comments and I love to connect with you there. As always, I've drawn a card for us. <laughs> this is a card from this deck here, which is the Wild Unknown Archetypes. And the card that I've drawn for us for today is this one here, which I just love. It's called the Sustainer. So I'm just going to read you the words from the guide. The Sustainer, the Peacemaker, the Upholder, the Preserver. The Sustainer works behind the scenes, tending to the tasks of life. They cultivate gardens, pay bills, keep the meals warm and mouths sweetly fed. The sustainer is at peace in the process of life, knowing there's no start or finish to humble yet meaningful tasks. They have a natural inclination to nourish others, to archive, to preserve Earth's resources, to consider environmental impact, to see their role in the divine cycle of life. It's common for the sustainer to become overworked, leading to resentment. Their tasks aren't glamorous and therefore the sustainer rarely receives the credit or attention. The sustainer longs to hold things in place so badly, especially relationships, that they resist necessary change. Take time with this archetype. It is within us all and needs our love. Contemplate what truly sustains you. Make a list. Notice how simple yet powerful those things are and spend some time tending them. Take note of the difference between maintaining and sustaining, which action describes your life more accurately. <laughs> so I really find these kinds of questions very helpful and they inform a part of my own personal self-reflective practice, which is incredibly important to me. And I suspect because you're here, it might be important to you too. <laughs> So the sustainer archetype really uh, reflects, I think, very strongly some of the aspects that I hold within myself and, and part of my own personal self-expression. And I can see different ways in which the sustainer shows up in the way that I tend my family and my home and my work and my business and my knitting practice, of course. <laughs> So one of the ways in which that sustainer shows up, I think, is the fact that every single year, uh, as part of my business, I offer something called the My Word Goddess readings. And I've made them available again this year. I only make them available from December through to the end of January, and then they come off the market. And the idea behind them is that they connect you to a goddess archetype. Uh, so that you can then explore that on your own terms. And I've got various different ways and supports for you to do that. And I also give you a selection of words based on the goddess archetype. And so this really helps you to inform a word of the year practice. So instead of choosing a resolution 
of which, you know, I've never really had a whole lot of success with those. Not very good at sustaining them, I have to say. <laughs> but instead of choosing a resolution, you choose a word instead. And that word becomes like a touchstone or a north star, something by which you can orientate yourself through for the rest of the year and becomes a place of growth and a place of inspiration, creativity perhaps, or even solace. So that's my own practice and that's what I support other people to practice as well. And so I'm gonna leave a link to those readings if anybody's interested in exploring that more. You can do that again it'll be in the show notes in the description box below the other thing that i wanted to touch on just before we get to all of this knitting and trust me i am surrounded with knitting and wool <laughs> because it's been such a long time since i uh, did uh, since i recorded a podcast uh, i do have quite <laughs> quite a bit of knitting but before we get to that point uh, i did just want to share a little bit about my thoughts about the direction of the podcast in general because I've got some plans for January uh, through to December 2023. What I want to try and do is to create a monthly schedule so at the end of each month I'll be sharing a video. For my patrons that will go up 24 hours early and then it'll be available to everybody just the, the following day and it will be a mix of some video footage and some straight uh, chatting to the street to the camera um, and sharing my sharing my knitting sharing my progress I live in a really beautiful part of the world Edinburgh is a glorious city at any time of the year although it has been particularly gloomy and dreary of late but <laughs> but it is a beautiful place and I'm surrounded by beautiful countryside and I really do get the opportunity to go to some lovely places and have some lovely experiences which aren't necessarily knitting related, but I think you might still be interested in them. So I would really like to share those with you throughout 2023, as well as the knitting. So I'm going to be putting together a, an episode at the end of each month that kind of brings all of those together, really inspired partly by my trip to France last summer. And if you go to episode 30, you'll see at the end I had some footage of my trip and I really enjoyed taking that footage and putting it together and editing it and putting some music to it. And, and you all seem to really enjoy it. You, I had a really good response to it. So I would like to do more like that uh, and really weave in and around that, this more direct to camera sharing. So, so that's my plan. And then halfway through each month, I'm going to be doing an exclusive sit and knit with me. And that's going to be for my patrons only. So if you want an episode every roughly two weeks, <laughs> then your best bet is going to be subscribing to the patron. And you can do that from as little as five pounds a month plus VAT in your own country. So, so yes, that's my plans. I, I'm a little bit nervous in sharing them because uh, it is going to be a technological and creative stretch for me. <laughs> it's going to be using some editing software and things that I'm not familiar with yet and I'm just going to have to play it by ear and see how it goes and in the knowledge that by the end of 2023 I will be much more comfortable with this form than I am at the very beginning of my journey. So I'm really looking forward to sharing that all with you and uh, yeah let's see let's see where it takes us. One last piece of admin and it's very much knitting related. You might remember a wee while back, I had mentioned that I was planning to do a co-host, a Lento Cal. The Lento is a beautiful pattern by Yona Hiatala, and it's from Lina, and it's from this edition, which is summer 2021. I'll show you the images of it, but unfortunately they chose a very dark, that's showing up a little bit better on the camera than it does on the page, interestingly enough. It's a, it's a plain raglan jumper knitted on six millimeter needles with a fingering weight and a mohair held together or you can knit it with a single strand of DK. And, uh, and so it's a quick knit, it's an easy knit, it's a gentle knit. And Kriya, um, Rebecca of the Kriya Bea podcast and I we're discussing how lovely it would be to co-host a cow where we all knit the lento together. I have, I will show you what I want to knit in, 
I'm going to be using this, which is the Ken Ross 4 ply in the colour Porridge and the Cowgirl Blues Kid Silk in the colour Sweet Dreams. So I'm going to be holding these two together and I'm hoping that these beautiful speckles in the mohair are really showcased well with the, the glorious creamy softness of the Kinross 4 ply. So that's going to be my cast on. We're going to start on Twelfth Night, which is the 5th of January, and we're going to go for two months. So we're going to wrap up on the 5th of March. Uh, we will have some prizes. I've already been in some discussions with some dyers, some Scottish dyers, about some prizes and Ginger Twist Studios, Jess over at Ginger Twist Studios, who you met in the, one of our summer episodes uh, when we were discussing summer knits over in her lovely shop, Ginger Twist, over in Abbey Hill in Edinburgh. Uh, she has offered two skeins of mohair in the Voyager colourway, which I will show you here. <laughs> and uh, she is also putting some kits together which are going to be available from the first, which should be when I'm posting this up. So, <laughs> so you should be able to hop straight over there and be able to purchase a kit from Ginger Twist Studio um, if you would like to join in. And of course, you can always draw from your stash. I have some stash ideas as well that I'm considering. I'll discuss those a little bit later. But, uh, but yes, you can absolutely use whatever yarn you wish to use uh, and cast on. We start on the 5th and we go of January and we go to the 5th of March. And I'll be sharing more about some of the other prizes later on. And Rebecca will be sharing about that over on her podcast, The Crea Bea, also. So there we go. I think that's all of the... Oh, I should say, we'll be using the hashtag LentoCal. L-O-L-E-N-T-O-K-A-L, <laughs> Lento Cal, and we will pop that up onto Instagram and yeah, I think it will mostly be an Instagram Cal. Um, that's, that's my feeling about it just now. Both Rebecca and I don't use Ravori a whole lot. Shouldn't speak for her, but I don't use it a whole lot. I do have a Meaningful Stitch group that you can access over there. So we might, we might, put up a post over there but I will confirm details on that a little bit later. Okay so oh my goodness that is all our admin, Lento Cal, My Word Goddess readings, podcast plans, oh and I haven't put my phone on silent, apologies. <laughs> okay on to the knitting. What am I wearing? Good question Amy. <laughs> You tell I'm out of practice here. I am wearing this beautiful belted cardigan. It is the Spark Cardigan by Andrea Mowry. I will stand up so that you can see. Here we go, this beautiful colour work. And this double knitted belt. It is a steaked cardigan, which was interesting because it's the first time I had steaked not using woolly wool, which, uh, so I had to use a sewing machine to reinforce and even then it felt a little bit, a little bit scary, but uh, it worked out fine. <laughs> and uh, I'll show you the yarn that I used because I had a little bit left over. I just found it in my stash. So I've got this Drops Lima in this lovely dark blue shade and I paired it with this. And this is Creme Key In The Mood Surprise in the colourway Cheerfulness. And this particular skein, as you can see, moved from sort of oranges and browns through to these tealy blues, and then these kind of bright spring greens. Each skein is quite different. Uh, so I had fun kind of trying to not match because it wasn't all that easy to match. And certainly, uh, I don't think I did too bad a job actually. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, so that was a spark cardigan by Andrea Mowry in Drops Lima and in the Creme Kate in the Mood Surprise in the colourway Cheerfulness. <laughs> and uh, and yes, so that's what I'm that's what I'm wearing. It is a super cozy cardigan. I like the fact that it's belted because you can really kind of pull it in around yourself and the shawl collar is delightful because it really hugs the back of your neck sometimes get a bit of a chill at the back of my neck, which is why I wear so many shawls. 
<laughs> so this is really nice. It gives me the shawl collar on my cardigan. So super cozy. So that is what I'm wearing. What have I finished? Well, as I said, it's been a little while. So there are a few finished objects and they're not small finished objects either. The first one that I want to share with you is this one. This is the Cargill and it's by Rebecca Klo, who is Rebecca of the Korea Bea podcast, who I'm co-hosting the Lentil Cal with. This is going to be a very Rebecca focused podcast, just FYI. <laughs> so the Cargill cowl came out in September and I was very fortunate because Rebecca lives quite close by and we attend a local knit night together. And I was fortunate enough to see the Cargill in process. And then some of the members of our knit night were also test knitting it. So I got to see other people knitting it as well. And then finally, when it came out, I was like, OK, I am ready. I really want I really want this beautiful jumper for myself. It has this wonderful dip stitch pattern, which then is divided with a rib design. The, mat, the, the symmetry on the raglans is really pleasing, <laughs> I have to say. It does take a little while to get used to the dip stitch uh, technique, but uh, there are some really helpful video tutorials for that, which will help you kind of get your head around what, what you're being asked to do. But uh, it was a lovely knit. I have used, what have I used? I've used Holst Super Soft in color Viola, which unfortunately is a discontinued colorway. And when I saw it was being discontinued, I panicked and bought a cone, as you do. <laughs> uh, the cones are sold as 500 grams. I have knitted a jumper and something else that I'm about to show you later. And I still have, well, I just weighed this cone before I came out to record and it was 256 grams. Now I think you can kind of generally attribute about five grams to the cone. So I basically have half the yarn left over after knitting a jumper and an, and an accessory. So the cones are really, really good value. And, you know, I have also used whole super soft cones to knit my boys jumpers and uh, my youngest I knitted him the Albion sweater last well earlier this year I had by Michelle Wong and it was in the whole super soft black and I held it double and I got and, and it wasn't a, a he's a he's an adult now shockingly turned 21 <laughs> So it's not a child's jumper, it's an adult jumper, an adult ma ma male, adult man's jumper. <laughs> and um, I used one cone and got the whole jumper out of one cone. So it is, it's very good value. It's a real workhorse yarn. It knits up really nice, uh, both single and double. I know it looks very light when you first get it and that's because it's got this spinning oil in it. It needs to be washed and then once you've washed it, it blooms. So you knit it up as is and then you wash it. It's also why it's then really important to knit a swatch before you start to knit your garment, just to make sure that you've, wa you've knitted your swatch, you've washed it, you've blocked it, it's dried, measure it. Now see what needle size you need to use and whether it's going to work for, your, for the gauge for the garment because it does alter quite significantly from the unwashed to the washed and blocked. This has bloomed beautifully and you can see too that it has a fabulous halo on it and that's because I held my super soft double with this which is Drops Kid Silk in the colorway Lavender. It is so lovely and uh, this beautiful sort of shade of purple, I think is just, I just really like it. <laughs> I'm going to be wearing this jumper on Hogmanay, which is our um, New Year's Eve in Scotland. So tomorrow evening, I'll be wearing my, my fancy, my fancy jumper. And uh, I'm really, really pleased with how it's turned out. So 
After having brought out the Cargill sweater pattern, Rebecca then brought out the Cargill cowl pattern. And so I decided that I was going to knit it in the same colorways as I had knitted this. Now this is a real, I, I have not washed and blocked this because I wanted, and I've waited so long to record this ridiculous, so after I've, after I've recorded, I'm absolutely washing and blocking this, but I wanted to show you the difference between a, a washed and blocked super soft held with mohair compared with an unwashed and blocked super soft with mohair in the same colorways. So here we are, here's the fabric for the Cargill in the jumper. And this is it in. So you can see actually that the color is even quite different. And you can also see that the stitch definition and the yarn is much thinner compared with this. It's really puffed out here and evened out. And I don't have that currently in the, in the cowl. So I will be washing and blocking this so that I can wear the two of them together. I'll just pop it on. I'm not, I won't pop the jumper, I'll pop the cowl on. <laughs> so, hi. <laughs> so here's the cowl and basically, when I wear it like this with the jumper that matches, it just looks like I've got a bit of a cowl neck or a big comfy polo neck, you know, and then I can take it off if I get too hot, but it just sits quite nicely underneath my jacket. I really like being able to combine garment patterns with accessory patterns. I've got more hair in my nose now. <laughs> I like to combine the accessory patterns with the garment patterns because then I think you can wear them together and then you've got a little bit more styling options. And that's what I think this Cargill cowl really provides me with having already done the jumper. So the Cargill cowl pattern was a charity pattern and um, all proceeds went to a charity called the Fistula Foundation and I think Rebecca said, well Rebecca was matching the first £600 of sales but that plus the sales that came after that I think amounted to almost £5,000 which is a huge amount of money. And, uh, and for such a good cause as well. So I bought my pattern during that period of time. So I'm really pleased that my money has gone towards that. Since having brought out the Cargill cowl pattern, uh, Rebecca has also brought out the Cargill Junior, which is the child's Cargill pattern. So if you want to, if you want to match with your with your children and have matching cargills, which I think is just the cutest thing ever, then you can do that. And I think she said 20% of sales of the Cargill Junior were going to were going to a charity as well. So I really love that she's doing that and she chooses her charities to donate to so carefully and uh, with a great degree of intention and care. So I'm just I really appreciate that and I thought you might too. So there we go, that was the Cargill cowl and the Cargill sweater. I then, after, <laughs> after going out for drinks, I agreed to be a test knitter for Rebecca's next jumper, which I have also now finished. This is the Dorney. <laughs> the Dorney is not yet out. I think it's coming out towards the end of January, I think. It's been so fun to be part of the, the test knit group. I've never been in a test knitter at that kind of level before. So, um, so it's been really interesting to, just to see what the process is and uh, how, to, how to navigate all of that and how to explore the pattern. And you know, it's been it's been really insightful. So and fun, what a lovely group of, of people that are, that are test knitting this beautiful pattern. So I have knitted my Dorney in New Lanark Spinning DK in the colourway Rowan, which you can see is a tweed yarn. It's got these sort of red and green tweedy flecks in it. 
Isn't that gorgeous? And I held it, in fact I can show you, this is how much I've got left. This was also a cone. I actually picked it up from a friend's D stash. So, uh, so yes, I had this DK weight yarn and I held it with Holst Titicaca, which is 100% alpaca lace. And this is in the colorway Blossom. The new Lanark spinning is 100% wool. I don't know what, what type of wool, but, but yes, 100% wool, 100% alpaca. And I held the two of them together and it created this really beautiful fabric. It is, it is so pillowy. I think it's also because of these gorgeous cables, but it just feels like, like marshmallowy soft, <laughs> which sounds a bit silly. But, uh, but yes, I'm really pleased with it. The, um, the collar is a folded collar, so I have uh, finished it off inside. I'm really pleased actually with, with the finishing that I got. My, the fit of mine looks quite different from Rebecca's at the neckline because I think Rebecca has put a piece of elastic in the neckline which then really kind of raises it and brings it in. Whereas mine is almost more like a broad crew neck or almost bordering on boat. And uh, I really love it. I really like that shape. I think it's very flattering and it feels um, much more comfortable for me to have my jumpers at that, that kind of, uh, with that neck, neck shaping. So I'm really pleased with how that's sitting and I don't think I will be putting a bit of elastic in to pull, pull the neck band further in. So there we go, this is the Dorney. It is all over cable. It's actually, even although it's all over cable, uh, you have quite a few rows in between your cable repeats. So you you can really get into, into a good rhythm with it. And certainly this flew off my needles in about two weeks. So. I, I was perhaps a little bit obsessive because I did really want to have it as my Christmas jumper for this year. <laughs> and in fact, I even managed to get it washed and blocked the night before meeting up with my knit night for the last knit night before Christmas. And Rebecca was there and I didn't tell her that I had finished it. And I had my big cozy coat on and my, my shawl all bundled up. And when I got to knit night, I took off my jacket and went, ta-da! <laughs> So that was a lot of fun. I got to surprise her. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, so I did manage to get it washed and blocked right before. I have worn it <laughs> a lot <laughs> because it is because the cables create such a such a thick fabric because you're essentially taking, you know, your your uh, stitches and crossing them over, which then creates kind of like a double thickness of fabric at the at each one of these cross points. So you do end up with quite a dense fabric, uh, which keeps you really, really cozy and warm. It's why I think cable patterns are so popular in the winter time and in the colder climates because, you know, they do keep us very warm. So there we go. That is the Dorney. It will be coming out, as I said, end of January. So you've got a little bit of a wait, but you can start to maybe think about what kind of what kind of colour you might like to knit your Dorney and I'm so pleased with the colour of mine. Um, I was, it was funny actually because I had decided I was going to knit it from stash and I had looked out this cone and I'd looked out the Titicaca yarn and I had cast on and then Pantone announced that their colour for 2023 was going to be magenta. <laughs> So there you go. I am <laughs> uh, setting trends, it would appear. <laughs> Not so much, but uh, but I did manage to cast on a magenta jumper just as magenta was announced as the colour for the year. So there we go. It is a colour I think I really suit and it's a colour that I really enjoy to wear. And I've got a lot of things that go very easily in my wardrobe with this particular jumper and hence why it's getting so much wear. In fact, so much so I've actually noticed that I've got a little bit of bobbling. I need to get my de-bobbler <laughs> or de-pillar. I don't know if you can see just there, just at the arm. And that's quite natural as you're, you know, with, particularly when it's a newer jumper, uh, when it's a newer knit, 
it just takes a little while for the fabric to settle, uh, but it will. And I'm just really pleased with it. I did, as I said, I did do the folded neckband on this jumper. I was supposed to do the folded one, or the pattern stated to do the folded neckband on the Cargill as well. And I didn't do that. I'll just show you quickly again. I just knitted, I just knitted it flat. And so it, it sits, you know, much closer to the to my body, to my collarbone, whereas this kind of really pops and makes a bit more of a statement. So the two have got really quite different, different looks to them, I think, but I, I really love them both. So there we go. That's my three finished objects. I do have a fourth, I've just realised, and I didn't bring it through. Give me two seconds. Ta-da! <laughs> so this is the Bis Bis Beret, Bis Bis Beret by Sari Nordland and I have knitted it in Fonte Tartan 3 which is a heavy fingering to sport weight yarn I would say and it's this gorgeous berry. I'm wearing this a lot which is why it's so crumpled because it basically lives in my coat pocket <laughs> which is why I forgot to bring it out but there you go you can see these gorgeous uh, increases because you start at the top here with a little I cord and then you move into your increases and then into these quick in set of increases and you finish it off with an I cord for a really kind of polished look there you go <laughs> I this was a really quick project for me. This basically took, I don't know, cast it on in the evening and cast it off the next morning. It was not, it's not a fat, it's not a, a slow knit, which compared with the other more intense involved knits, uh, this, was, uh, this was flying off the needles. I knitted this in a yarn that I received from my mum as part of my yarn advent. And I'm gonna be sharing more on that with you later on. But I will just say that I absolutely loved this Fonte yarn. Look at the stitch definition. And the yarn itself is, I don't know if you can see, but it's almost got like a golden fleck to it or a golden fiber to it, uh, which then just really kind of creates this very rich sort of wine shade that I just absolutely adore. It was so easy to knit with because the fibre is so plump but, but really well spun. It's well plied so you don't find that your needle is cutting through your, through your strands all the time. Mum picked up most, I think, of my yarn advent from Stephanie at My Little Mai, which is her local yarn shop in Cognac, France. So I am thinking at some point... <laughs> I'm going to have to go back over and I'm going to have to choose a sweater quantity of this Tartan 3 yarn. I think it comes in quite a few colourways. I would love to see the range and to choose enough to make a jumper because it was such a delight to knit with. So, so there we go. That's the Beast Beast Beret by Sari Nordland. A super quick knit. Uh, I washed and blocked it and uh, dried it on a dinner plate to get the shape. <laughs> and I popped the dinner plate on top of my uh, radiator. So <laughs> I've got a shelf that sits on top of the radiator. So uh, it dried really quickly as well. <laughs> but look at those, look at those increases. There's something very pleasing about those increases. So love a berry. Uh, and after, of course, I did that thing where I finished it and I was like, I want one of these in every color. So, so yes, that, that might be a thing. <laughs> could definitely see me knitting more of these in the future because it was a very quick, very fun project. In fact, I first learned about this design, I think, on Casey from Young Folks Knits uh, podcast, and she had a whole episode uh, which was kind of exploring French girl, French girl beauty, and, and I think she was talking about this particular pattern and that. So, so yes, I saw that and I thought, hmm. I know what I can I know what I can use that beautiful ball of wool I just got in my advent calendar for. <laughs> so there we go. It's the Beast Beast Berry. And that's my last finished object. 
but I am so close to being nearly finished on another one. So works in progress, but nearly, nearly a finished. I really want to get this off the needles by Hogmanay. My great grandma had a thing whereby she said that it was bad luck to have anything still on your needles at New Year's Eve. <laughs> well, I've lived most of my life with think with a, a works in progress on my needles at New Year's Eve, and I think I've had quite a lucky life, really. <laughs> so I'm not sure I strictly go along with that, really, uh, which is just as well. <laughs> But uh, I would like to get this off the needles by um, by Hogmanay, just because it would be lovely to go into the first and cast on a new a new project. And I'll speak to you more about new projects in uh, just a little bit. But here we are. This is the Curvette Shawl by Stephen West. I've knitted a lot of Stephen West patterns this year. And uh, this is the last one. So this yarn, oh my God. This yarn is the Natural Alpaca. It is single clip from 2019 from the alpaca called Zarina from Bobcat Alpacas. You can actually buy their yarn on their website. I bought this yarn in person after trekking with the alpacas for my birthday back at the beginning of November. So I cast on this beautiful shawl. Now the Curvette actually gets you to move through colors. You hold the same color mohair for the eyelet sections and you change um, the, the color of your fingering weight yarn as you move through the shawl. And I have obviously not done that. I've just kept the one, the one color. Here you go, here's this gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Is I honestly it is so soft, so soft. This is a two ply yarn. Most of the yarns that they do are DK, but these said that they were approximately five hundred meters for a hundred grams, just to give you an idea. So kind of a, a light fingering weight. It's a pretty even spin, uh, although sometimes it, it does get a little bit thick and thin, but for the most part, it's pretty even. And the mohair that I'm pairing it with is this Ching Fiber Spring Summer 21 Club colorway <laughs> in the mohair silk. And you can see it's sort of like rainbow colors. I'm starting to pop out, that's always the problem, isn't it? With our caked yarns. And it's got these kind of yellow neon, kind of highlighter yellow sections, uh, which I just absolutely love. So when it's knitted up, this is what it looks like. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm so in love with this. But I decided that I didn't want to do, I wanted to modify the border. And how I wanted to modify the border was that I wanted to add in some beads because I was imagining, well, this is such special yarn and it really is like a, I think it's like a, a birthday cake with vanilla frosting and rainbow sprinkles. <laughs> So I really wanted to add in some beautiful beads. And so I found some beads over at the website totallybeads.co.uk. And these are Toho size six seed beads. And I got the rainbow, what are they called? Rainbow gold. Hang on a second, I wrote it down. Uh, rainbow crystal. These are the rainbow crystal beads. Can you see them? And I ordered seven bags of 10 grams. So I've got just seven, 70 grams, which is just over a thousand beads. <laughs> it seems madness. However, I have now put almost half of my beads into my shawl. So let me, sh I, I'm of course a mid row because these are massive rows. The row that I'm on actually is a beaded row and they do take, a, these rows do take a really long time to do. So I'll show you what I have. This is what it's looking like at the moment. Now you see those little gold beads? So the gold is actually painted on the inside of the bead 
and then it's a clear bead but it's got like a rainbow glaze to it. So they're really pretty. The size 6 are the ones that I would recommend for uh, lace weight yarn because uh, then you can kind of make sure that the yarn fits through the, the, the hole in the bead. It took me a wee while to figure that out so I am sharing it with you. <laughs> Uh, so you can see here as well that I'm doing something a little bit different. If you know the pattern, it's basically you're doing some shaping to kind of create uh, a bit of a scalloped edging to the border. And instead of doing that, I am increasing the frequency of these eyelet rows. And I'm going to do three rows like that. Let me see. There you go. I'm going to do three rows, so that's one row, two row, and then I'm going to have another beaded eyelet row. And then I'm going to finish it off with a pico edging instead of the eye cord that's specified in the pattern. So I think it's going to be completely glorious. It's going to create a lot of drape. There will be weight at the bottom of this um, particular shawl, but it is only 70 grams. So even although it's a thousand beads and that sounds like an awful lot, uh, I do just think it's going to create a really beautiful effect and I'm really excited about it. So we'll see. I've got the rest of today and tomorrow to try and complete and I'm not that far off. Not that far off. So it might not get washed and blocked till the new year, but it might be off the needles. <laughs> the other work in progress is actually going to come off the needles as well. And I will explain why. Uh, I am part of a podcaster group chat and we decided this year that we were going to do a scrap advent and so our names were connected with um, other podcasters to send and to receive advents from. So my yarn advent went to Inga of Knitting Traditions and if you would like to see some of the yarns that I sent Inga you can go and watch her last couple of episodes and she shows you uh, which ones she's received and she shows a bit of footage at the end of her opening them and you can also see what she's made with them already so which is a exceptionally beautiful project and, uh, and a really lovely use for the yarns that she got. So you can see all of that. I got my yarn from Jana from Finnish Knitting Stories and oh my goodness how spoiled have I been. <laughs> she sent me just the most wonderful yarns and just every day was a complete delight. She included quite a lot of her own hand dyed, which I had never used before, and but I would totally use in the future because it, her colors are just completely glorious. So I decided that I was gonna cast on a anthology shawl and I did really swither over it because um, I really like being able to choose um, the yarn colours in my projects. Colour and colour placement is really important to me and so this felt like a real challenge, you know, could I, you know, work with uh, yarn that I wasn't seeing in advance and knit it into a project and I eventually decided that yes I could and having cast on, <laughs> I've now decided that I can't. <laughs> so mostly it's because I, well, I'll show you. This is what I've got so far. So this is the Anthology Throw by Helen Stewart. I love this neon. Love neon. So I've got this beautiful neon. I've got these lovely neutrals. And then I just, she did such a good job with this advent. Like we've got all these gorgeous dusky pinks and purples and oh, and then I've caked some of them up as well. And oh, look at them. Aren't they beautiful? And the more I opened, the more I thought, oh, <laughs> these are just so beautiful. I'm not sure I want to put them into a circular throw pattern because I don't, well, I, it's, I suppose it's a throw. So it's, spent, it's meant more for homeware than it is to be worn. But I really want to wear these colors. And I won't wear that. I won't wear a large circular lace shawl. I know that I won't. So I've sat with it for ages, trying to decide what I wanted to do. 
and uh, you know not to be hasty or anything let's just put it to one side make our decision and uh, and yeah I think I, I, I decided I was going to keep it to show you so you can see it and then I'm going to I'm going to rip it back and I'm going to retrieve the yarn and I'm going to decide on a different project that um, that I will make use of and that I will really love to wear uh, and I'm really excited about that so so that's been a big lesson for me. I'll just show you that this is the skein that she gave me for Christmas Day. And it's called, the colorway is called Fig. And it's a yak sock. So it's 70% superwash merino, 20% yak and 10% nylon. And it's 400 meters for 100 grams. And it is this beautiful, warm, pale, oh, just, gorgeous purple so brownish purple I would say it's a really difficult color to describe fig actually sums it up perfectly I'm not getting super accurate colors now which is disappointing but inevitable because the sun has started to go down so we will just have to make use of it you will just have to take my word for it that this is exactly the color of fig <laughs> So there we go. I'm keeping them all in my beautiful yarn bowl that my brother gave me for Christmas last year. My brother and his partner, Jenny, gave me last year for, for Christmas. So I'm keeping it all in here so they're all safe. And I'm going to rip them back, rip back what I've knitted so far and choose a different project. And honestly, it's nothing against the, the design at all. The design is beautiful. And I'm seeing other people's knitting up and absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's just that I know that I'm not going to wear it and I want to be able to wear the colours that I've that received in that advent. So so that's where I'm at with that work in progress. I'm almost finished one and one's going to get ripped back. So there we go. Those are my two works in progress at the moment. But do I have plans? I've got plans. <laughs> next cast ons is the next section. <laughs> The first one that I want to share with you is the Ilya by Caitlin Hunter. It's a pattern that came out just a couple of weeks ago, I think. And she launched it with just the most exquisite video of her ice skating, wearing her Ilya. And <laughs> I'm in awe of anybody. Uh, the Stricka Chick also brought out a beautiful reel as well of her skating, on, on, you know, wild skating outside, you know, just in these epic landscapes wearing beautiful knitwear. And honestly, I'm like, I'm Bambi on ice. I, think. <laughs> I can't put one foot forward without falling over. So I'm in, like in awe of the grace and the beauty. And then, of course, the gorgeous knitwear. So I, as I said, I'm going to cast on the Ilya. Oh dear, I've dropped a ball of yarn on the floor. So basically you have like two colours. You start off at the top, at the neck, and you create kind of like a cowl neck. I think it's a really interesting neckline. And it's one that I would really like um, to wear, I think. So you start off there and you've got some colour work and then you move into the main colour. So the, the neck and part of the colour work I'm going to be doing in this yarn here, which is JC Rennie DK, Super Soft DK. I was holding it upside down, struggling with the light, but it is a charcoal black. That's pretty true to colour. It is, it is incredibly soft. Uh, Ruth from the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast very kindly sent me some of, uh, some balls of this, uh, which just absolutely beautiful. They're 50 gram balls in the colour charcoal and it's 171 metres per 50 gram ball. So I'm going to start off with this and my main colour is going to be this beautiful yarn which is West Yorkshire Spinner's uh, Fleece which is uh, Jacob DK so it's the natural. So we're going to have this going on. This is much softer than this. This is rustic it's still soft, but it, this is much, much softer. So that's why I think I'm going to have the black up here next to my neck. And then I'm going to have this for the body. And then my colour work is going to be in this, which is Di Gilpin's Laland 100% Scottish Lambswool, 
175 meters per 50 grams and this is in the color furs which is a Scots word for gorse which is that beautiful um, yellow bloom that you see on mountain sides. So that's my colors. Aren't they fabby? Maybe I should do it that way around. So, so yes, that's what my colors for my Ilia are going to be. I can't wait to cast on. I would have cast on days ago uh, if it had not been for my determination to try and get my Curvette shawl finished. <laughs> so the Curvette shawl gets finished. This will be the next cast on. Although that is being a little bit cheeky because I have promised a knit, which must get done in January also. So uh, my husband has asked me, Frank has asked me for a vest, like an out, outwear vest, not like a, not like a string vest. <laughs> Uh, so he chose, I, I showed him the Wooly Knit British Wool colourways and he chose this one, which I got in the post. And this is Pine Tree Green. Let's hold it up so you can see the colour. Isn't that glorious? I love the British wool. It is, again, it's very soft. It is rustic, but it is very, very lovely and soft. So. I clearly have plenty of this, so I will knit a vest and I will have extra left over. But he was quite specific in the attributes that this vest needed to have. And it took me a little while to find a pattern that would do. And eventually I found one and it is the vest number four by My Favourite Things. I have not knitted any My Favourite Things designs, so this will be the first one. Uh, she or they, I don't know if it's she, they um, name all of their designs numbers and numbers and I are not entirely always on talking terms. <laughs> so I really struggle to remember uh, which numbers refer to which patterns. But vest number four is the one that I'm going to be doing for Frank because he wanted it to be plain he wanted it to button up the front and he wanted it to have a high neck. He didn't want a V-neck. Uh, so I did eventually find this particular one. I think I'm knitting the second largest size and uh, I'm, ho I'm hoping that I'm just going to be able to knit it straight without having to make modifications. But we will, I'll get him to try it on as we go and we can, we can see how we get on. But he's asked for wooden buttons, so there will be wooden buttons uh, added at some point. But uh, it's a much plainer knit, so that might be like my evening knitting, whereas this is my happy fun knitting. <laughs> so there we go. So I'm going to be knitting the Lento, the Ilya, and vest number four, and... My other cast on, I'm just going to start January with lots of cast ons, how fun. My other cast on, I've got two other cast ons I'm planning. The first one is, or not even the first one is it now, it's like the third or the fourth. <laughs> the next one, the next cast on is going to be in this fabulous hot pink Mondim from Rosa Pomar yarn. And it is in the colourway 108. So it is, this, it is as hot pink as it is presenting on screen. And I'm going to hold it double with this, which is Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk. So this is 140 metres per 50 grams, I think. And this is 385 metres. So I'm hoping that by holding the two of these together, it will give me worsted weight and I'm going to knit the Textured Rib Gloves by Anne Budd. Now, I have knitted a pair of these before. I knitted them for my husband last couple of years ago in a colour not dissimilar to this, I would actually say. And um, he loves them. He wears them all the time. I didn't do the texture in the rib. I just did them plain. It is a wonderful pattern. If you've ever been cautious about casting on fingered gloves and 
I was cautious, <laughs> uh, then this is the pattern for you. It is beautifully written, very clear to follow. It provides uh, measurements and instructions for three different weights of yarn, sport, worsted and iron, and three different sizes, small, medium and large. So there's a lot of flexibility within the pattern itself. So it's, it's just very useful. Um, the texture in, the, in the, the cuff itself is very is pretty subtle, but, um, but I know that, that, um, that he wouldn't have liked that. He just wanted to have the plain. I've yet to decide whether I'm going to do that for myself or not, but I am finding we had a really cold snap in December. And when I say really cold, I know lots and lots of other countries have much, much colder weather than we do in the winter time. We don't really get that cold here normally, but we did have some really cold temperatures um, down to you know, minus 10 or so. So, and, and that is very cold for us. And also because our housing stock is not really designed for colder weather. So you actually have the experience of being cold in your, in your own home and also, we are living through, collectively, a cost of living crisis as pertains particularly to fuel bills. So everybody's turning their fuel, turning their, their heating down just at a point when actually they really need to be turning it up. So, so that's a very problematic situation that, that we're moving through as a, as a country at the moment. So it was a very cold period of time. And I noticed that I was developing chill blains on my fingers because my hands were so cold. And for somebody who works with their hands all the time, every single day, um, it just really reminded me that these are incredible tools. You know, these are my, my ability to use my hands uh, in the way that I, I can use them is an incredible gift and it needs to be cherished and cared for. And so I need to look after my hands better, folks. <laughs> and one of the ways I'm going to do that is going to knit these ridiculously bright pink fluffy gloves. <laughs> so there we go. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to knit myself a pair of gloves because every time we went out and Frank was wearing his gloves, I just thought I must knit myself a pair of these. They are like a necessity. So they will be cast on really, really soon because obviously I want to get the use of them before before the weather warms up so <laughs> so there's that and then there's one last intended cast on and it's apologies for the crinkling but it's all living in here you will remember me sharing this i think probably in the previous episode if you watched that this is Isaiah highland wool in the colors um chocolate chili curry rhubarb as is how I remember it <laughs> chili chocolate curried rhubarb <laughs> uh, with this gorgeous icy pop so I've got these lovely warm rich colors and then I've got this icy blue which is blowing out a little you get a more accurate color actually the further back um, and I got these yarns and I, I treated myself for my birthday in November and these are going to be the Aurora Cabin Shawl, which is this year's Stephen West Hyper Knit Along. And cast on date was Boxing Day and it was all set to cast on. And then I thought, this is ridiculous. I still have my last Stephen West shawl on the needles. So I want to get that one completed before I cast on the next one. So I will cast that. I will cast this one on. I've been seeing people's um, uh, photographs of their new cast-ons of the Aurora Cabin Shawl and they just look so beautiful that I, I absolutely will be casting this on. So so that's my final <laughs> dream cast-on for the moment. <laughs> but I will be sharing my progress and my cast-ons uh, in the January episode. So I'm really excited about showing you some footage of that of my own process and of my practice as well as being able to perhaps show you some finished objects along the way so so there we go that is all of the dream cast-ons on to new to me there's there's a lot here folks okay so i'm, <laughs> I'm gonna start just 
throwing some balls of wool away here because <laughs> I don't have space. So, okay, <laughs> I will tidy up later. It's fine. Okay, uh, new to me. Well, as I said, I did the scrap advent with Yana and got all of these beautiful minis. And then I did the swap advent that I do with my mum. And we, we've been doing it quite a few years. We didn't do it last year because we had moved home and she had moved home and we were all just a bit discombobulated. So we decided to leave it last year and we did it this year. So I sent her some yarn, which uh, I will show you, hopefully show you a photograph of it here. And I will check with her to see if it's okay to show you what she made with, or what she's making with it. Uh, because she is knitting, uh, or she was, every day she opened a new package, uh, she knitted a new stripe into her painting bricks scarf, another pattern by Stephen West. And I gave her yarns mostly from two Scottish uh, hand dyers. One was from, Dis well, one set was from Dystopic Fibre, who's John over in Glasgow. And uh, the other was from Zakami and oh, beautiful, beautiful yarns. So I will try and show you a photograph. She sent me just the most fantastic collection of yarns. I'm gonna have to take a sip of, wa of my water because she absolutely knows my, my color, <laughs> my color palettes. So this is some of the yarns that she gave me, these beautiful uh, minis, and then this gorgeous full skein, which I got on Christmas day, uh, Manos del Uruguay, and it's a merino silk, I think. Yes, 70% wool, 30% silk. This color is called Turkish Delight. Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm gonna to have to think of a very special project that uses all of these beautiful single ply merino silks. Uh, she gave me this lovely Zauber ball, which is gorgeous. She gave me the, the yarn for this hat and she gave me some other um, Tartan 3 Fonties. So these are another two colours from the Fonty Tartan 3. You see what I mean about the ply? It's a really round um, strand. And it just creates such a beautiful stitch definition and fabric, really coherent fabric. So, so yes, I've got those. She gave me quite a few uh, balls of Fonty BB Merinos in just the most wonderful hot colours. There's another one. Aren't they gorgeous? And then I've got a black as well, there you go. So I got those. She gave me a ball of Ulysse, Dererum Natura. And this beautiful, look at that yarn. And it's so lofty. I'm really intrigued about trying this out. She gave me these amazing little minis, like the fluorescent neon pops. I actually really want to use these um, as some of the colour work in a Junko Twigs. Uh, so that's some other cast on. That might be February. <laughs> uh, she gave me some beautiful mohairs as well. Uh, here they are. Aren't they beautiful? And, oh, there's another one. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And she gave me a couple of balls of Fonte Ombel, which is fabulous yarn. It is 75% mohair, 20% wool, and 5% polymid. And it is 50 grams, gives you 145 meters. So it, it's actually quite a broad, thick strand, super fluffy. So I'm really excited about what I could make with this very soft. <laughs> very soft and lovely so those oh yes and she gave me some of these as well which is super intriguing she got a cone of this and again it's this beautiful purple yarn and uh, it's a light 
fingering heavy lace, I would say. So I've got some of that to explore the possibilities of. I think that's, I think that's me. Uh, I did also receive during December a beautiful skein of mohair which was gifted to me by a viewer called Carolyn Holbrook who is Wooly Needle on Ravelry and Instagram and she got in touch with me and said that uh, she would like to send me a skein of mohair silk in a Rhinebeck special colourway from Miss Babs which is oh my goodness for one thing, it goes so beautifully with my advent calendar yarn. <laughs> so I need to come up with a beautiful, perfect project for that gorgeous skein of mohair. Thank you so much, Carolyn. It was incredibly kind. So this is a mohair silk. It is the Moon Glow base. It's 400 meters for 50 grams and uh, lace weight. I'm so excited to cast something on with that and to to find a project that really allows it to to shine and take center stage so that was new to me yarn and then on christmas day i opened up a parcel from my grandma and i thought it was going to be chocolates <laughs> but it wasn't chocolates it was a box from we County Yarns and We County Yarns special they do the Kinross they, they commission the the spin I think on the Kinross four ply and the Kinross lace uh, but what they're most known for I think are their JC Rennie mini balls and so when I opened my box this is what I found oh, <laughs> oh my goodness Look at these colors. I was honestly, I was so surprised uh, and so excited. So, so yes, I have all of these beautiful mini balls. Each one I think is 10 grams. Let me double check that. Uh, yes, 10 grams, which gives you approximately 45 to 56 meters. The colors, oh God, they're just absolute. I don't know which one to show you first. Look at that, it's like bright, beautiful green. Stonehenge, that one's called. And then there's gorgeous, I would have said that's like a sea glass blue, it's called Frost. Um, and then look at this black one here. I don't know if you'll see, but it's got like all of these other colors in it as well, like red and green and it's called Midnight. And we've got this one here, Oogie Pearl. Which I think is a colourway that um, Rebecca spoke about just recently. It's really, it's like an opal, I think. Uh, just every single, every single mini ball you pick up, um, you fall in love with a with a new with a new colour. This one's called pistachio. Oh, oh fabby! So that's a huge amount of fun, and I don't quite know exactly what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'm having. A lot of fun contemplating the possibilities. Now, interestingly, earlier on in the month, I met up with Liz, who won, uh, she won the, oh gosh, what was it called? Bannock Yarn, the Bannock Yarn prize package, and she lives in Edinburgh. So we met up for coffee uh, in a lovely little cafe called Seven, just at Toll Cross in Edinburgh highly recommend if you go have the goat's cheese salad it is delish <laughs> and uh, I gave her a prize package and she gave me a book <laughs> and the book that she gave me was this one here which is the Knit Sonic Stranded Colourwork Playbook Colourwork Playbook and oh my goodness I have yet uh, December has been a ridiculously busy busy month so um, I have yet to sit down and have like a really proper, a proper look at this book, but it is full of ideas about creating your own, your own colour work patterns. And I have the ideal yarn to work with. So, so that's really exciting. So this is by Felicity Ford. 
I actually have the Colour Work source book that goes along with this. So I'm going to be exploring both the source book and the playbook together, I think, with, um, with this beautiful JC Rennie mini balls from We County Yarns. So that's super exciting. I actually have another book to share with you, which is also new to me. See, this is the problem with not podcasting on a regular basis. It forces me to realise just how much, how much has come into my home. <laughs> but, and it was Christmas time, so, you know. Uh, I got Lerke, is it Lerke Bayer? Close Knit. Now, I think she, she's called, I think what they call, Europe's Coolest Knitter. Lerke is so much cooler than I am. That's all I will say. <laughs> she is so much cooler than I am. Uh, I love her um, Instagram uh, uh, feed, uh, her, her grid and what she shares. Her, she's just so creative. She's so daring in her, in her style and colour choices. I find that very provocative and um, inspiring and makes me want to be more daring. And uh, she brought out this book and it came out originally, um, oh gosh, I'm going to embarrass myself now. I don't think, is it, I think she's Danish. So I think it originally came out in Danish and it only more recently came out in English. And I was so desperate to get this book. But of course, with Christmas and, you know, this, that and the next thing, I didn't get it. Well, I spotted it in the bookshop when I was there a couple of days ago and I just went, Ugh. <laughs> I bought presents for everybody else. I'm buying one for myself. So there we go. Lucky Myers, close knit. It's, uh, it's really fascinating. She's got uh, some really clever ideas and a lot about her own personal process. Um, and she's got a lot about, like, she's got some relatively simple patterns that shows you, that, that kind of explains some of her creative ideas. Um, she, there she is. See, I told you she's a lot cooler than I am. <laughs> Look. Goodness. Okay, so, uh, so it's got, uh, some patterns in it, but not a huge amount of patterns, uh, but a lot of how to take a pattern and do something different with it and kind of apply this, uh, these, this kind of approach. So I'm just, I'm just really excited to kind of explore this all a little bit more and, um, and to try and use up a little bit more of my stash. Just got these little girls' dresses. Uh, so, uh, she's got these amazing the bad idea blanket. Uh, so yeah, I'm just I'm really intrigued. Ooh, scrunchies. <laughs> so, yeah. So I got this book as well. I'm very excited by it. I think it's really going to, you know, bring a new dimension to my knitting practice in 2023. Okay. Well. I've got, what, I've got a bit more acquisitions. <laughs> so during the uh, Wooly Knit advent, which was a series of deals which were released um, to their newsletter subscribers on a daily basis leading up to Christmas, one day was uh, one kilo of mixed British wool cones for £15. Uh, should be £44. And I hopped on that deal so fast because I just thought, I love their colours, I love their colourways. Uh, it seemed like a screaming deal. I was like, I cannot imagine being disappointed by whatever they chose for me, you know, because it's going to be, a, it's mixed. It's, they're going to choose one kilo's worth of, of cone leftovers, basically. Um, and so I was really excited to receive it. Uh, and then it arrived, and then I didn't have to imagine being disappointed because I was disappointed. And there's nothing to do with the with woolly knit or the yarn. It's just that the colours are so. I, as I showed you, I had already just bought. This is a different shade of 
green than this one. I can't remember what this one's called. Uh, but it's very, very close and I had just literally bought a 500 gram cone for Frank's vest. Uh, then I've got this one here and then this one here and then this one and then this one. This is the only one that had any colour in it. <laughs> and it's the one that I had. <laughs> so I... Well, you've watched all of the... You've watched up to here. You've seen the kind of colours I knit with. You see the colours that I'm choosing to knit with next. Uh, even when I do choose neutrals, like for example with the Ilya, I'm popping it with a really bright yellow. Uh, I'm also intending to do something similar with the twigs. Uh, so with the twigs, I thought I could use this along with another cone that I have in a sort of a mossy khaki green and pop it with my these neon brights. Uh, but these are not these are not my colours. I showed my I showed my friend Jen, and she said, "Wow, they got it's hard to get it wrong six times over, but they managed it." <laughs> The other one I've got, in fact, I've not got it here. I'm not quite sure what I've done with it. Is a is a cone of like dark chocolate brown, and again the colours are beautiful. The yarn is gorgeous. Uh, it's just not the kind of colours that I would naturally gravitate towards. But maybe that then becomes a creative invitation in and of itself. You know, maybe I then start to look and see. Well, how can I use these colours to really allow the colours that I already have to, to really pop and maybe I can use some of my precious leftovers to really, you know, be showcased, I suppose, against um, yarns which are far more, far more neutral uh, in, in colour. So, so that was the woolly knit, the woolly knit cone. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't entirely successful but it's not entirely unsuccessful it's a lot of yarn uh, it was very well priced it is 100 percent british wool it is beautiful i will figure something out with it we're also discussing as part of our knit night to do a yarn swap in january so i might actually take a few of these along and see if i can swap them out for for colors that are a little bit more me but then this is the risk that you take when you when you go into a mystery, you know, whether you've done a Stephen West mystery knit or a, another mystery knit along or you've ordered yarn sight unseen, perhaps as part of a club, you you open yourself up to the to the creative invitation of it. Um, and it might take you by surprise. It might throw you a curveball. Well, what do you do then? And actually, that's really when your creativity comes into into play. So the other thing that I got when I bought the 500 gram cone for Frank, so I thought if I'm buying yarn for him, I'm buying it for me too. <laughs> and I bought two skeins of these ridiculous 200 gram hanks, which like, that's the scale. That's the scale we do, isn't it? It's bigger than my head. It is actually bigger than my head. <laughs> like Princess Leia. <laughs> So these are in the harvest colourway, it's the British wool. They didn't have a cone of it, but they did have it in hanks. So I got two hanks. I've got 400 grams of this, which is more than enough to, to do a project with, to do a jumper with. Uh, and then I do have one other woolly knit uh, purchase, which is not arrived yet, but I must share it with you because it really made me laugh. Uh, I saw on Instagram that they were doing a jumbo cone sale. Uh, so my interpretation of that was that they would have lots and lots of cones for sale. Uh, but actually, it was a sale of jumbo size cones and they were quite unusual blends. Were well, not ones that you, that not ones that they advertise on their site, certainly. Um, and the only one that I was really interested in was a wool cotton marl. Uh, and they had one that was the harvest colourway and so it's a harvest British wool marled with a strand of white cotton. So it looks really interesting. 
and they were selling it for £10. I thought, that's amazing, that's a great deal. So I bought that, which plus packet, post and packaging, it cost £14.50. So, you know, last of the big spenders, me. <laughs> it was only really after I had ordered it that I properly assessed what it was that I had bought. Uh, because this is a 1.6 kilo cone of yarn. 1.6. Like I said, numbers and I are sometimes not best friends. So I don't know why I got this so twisted, but I actually thought I'd bought a smaller cone than a normal cone, but actually it's over three times bigger. <laughs> Welcome to my world. It's like being Alice in Wonderland every day. <laughs> Things are supposed to be smaller, big and other ways round. But anyway, I have bought a 1.6 kilo which when I calculated kind of an, uh, an approximation, I think I've bought over six kilometers of this yarn. I, I you know, <laughs> six kilometers. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this uh, yarn. I had thought I would do some kind of homeware stuff with it. But basically, I think I could knit my whole I could probably knit a blanket that would like wrap around the whole block several times over. <laughs> Six kilometers of yarn. So yes, that is on its way. It has not arrived next. I will share it with you when it does. <laughs> if you have any idea of what to use six kilometers of yarn with, <laughs> I've already decided it must be knitted double, triple, quadruple, perhaps, maybe more. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what I end up using it for. So that was my that was my last new to me purchase, which brings us on to what's bringing me joy. So I did actually bring out a video just before this one, which you might have seen. It came out on the twenty second of December, and it was the second half of a Zoom call that I recorded with Jackie of Caddy Jack's Knits, which was all about the poetry advent that we ran throughout December. So we started on the 1st and we took it all the way up to the 20th, up to winter solstice. And we each took turns sharing a poem. And we didn't know which poems we were going to choose. We didn't know which poems and the other person was going to choose. And so the ones that we did um, she's really kind of uh, created a, a poetry conversation, you know, they responded to one another throughout, or we responded to each other through the medium of poetry. We shared it on Instagram and if you want to see the poems that we shared you can go and check the saved highlights on my stories on Instagram and you can see the whole, all of the, the poems. Or you can hop over to the Caddy Jack's Knits channel and you can watch the first half of our Zoom conversation, which is poems 1 to 10. Yes, <laughs> 1 to 10. And uh, then hop over to the Meaningful Stitch and watch the second half, which takes us poems 11 to 20. Uh, unfortunately, the video didn't work on the recorded Zoom call for Jackie. So the majority of her half is, is audio only, although it does show any time she shares her screen, so you will be able to see the, some of the poems. Uh, and on mine it's the, it's the video and the, and the audio, so you'll be able to see it as well. Uh, so if you're into poetry or you just want something really lovely and soft and gentle and relaxing and thoughtful uh, to listen to and to watch in the first couple of weeks of the new year, then that might be a really lovely thing for you to go and visit. It was certainly a truly joyful experience to curate those poems uh, and, to, and to share them and to explore them with Jackie on the call. We've been doing the Poetry Advent for quite a few years now and we do have thoughts about doing another Advent not at Christmas time, but I will share more about that Lee, in another episode uh, once we've shored up some of the details, but we will have another Poetry Advent at some point in the future. What I've been watching that's been bringing me joy, well, I watched Glass Onion, uh, which is the new Knives Out movie with Benoit Blanc, the wonderful uh, detective. 
and I just really loved it. So I loved Knives Out when it came out a couple of years ago. We watched it in the cinema. And unfortunately, this only had like a one week run in the cinema before it was going to be on Netflix. But it came out on the 23rd of December on Netflix. So I quickly uh, messaged both my sons and said, don't watch it. We'll watch it all together on Christmas Day. So my daughter was spending Christmas Day with her partner and his family. So we just had both our boys with us for Christmas this year. And uh, and so I told them not to watch it. And then we all watched it together on Christmas Day. And I really, really enjoyed it. It was just perfect viewing for that particular moment. And, uh, and yeah, the just everything about it really the storytelling the the very clever narrative twists and the the construction of the plot and the characterization and it's just very clever but not so clever it's annoying <laughs> so i think you'll really like it it's on netflix and uh, if you've not watched knives out you don't need to watch knives out to watch glass onion they are entirely separate movies uh, with one shared character, which, who's the detective, in much the same way as like an Agatha Christie novel. You know, you've got certain, um, the detective remains the same, but uh, the whole cast of characters and settings uh, changes every time. And that's the concept behind these Knives Out movies. Uh, so yeah, I recommend it. It's, it was very fun. Uh, later on in Christmas Day, after the boys had gone home, we watched, Frank and I watched, See How They Run, which is the movie with Saoirse Ronan in it, uh, who plays a young detective, a uh, young detective, a young policewoman, uh, and it's a period piece, and it's, what does really well is it kind of, it's, it's a whodunit, but it's based around the performance of The Mousetrap, Agatha Christie's The Mousetrap, but it doesn't give away anything about the mouse trap, which of course is the is the big thing about the mouse trap. You're not supposed to, to give away the the who done it, and it, it and I've never seen the mouse trap, so I cannot tell you who done it. So that I'm not in risk of uh, putting my foot in my mouth there. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, but it does that very cleverly, and that it manages to create a, a story, a narrative based around something which is and is required to re remain a, a mystery so I thought they did that well and but if you watch it for anything because <laughs> it is very it's quite light if you watch it for anything watch it for the interiors because the sets are absolutely stunning there is a writer who just has the most fabulous apartment and I just loved everything about it I just want my flat to look like his <laughs> So yes, I, I really enjoyed See How They Run. The other thing that we've been watching is the is Three Pines, which is on Amazon Prime. See How They Run was on Disney Plus, by the way. And uh, Three Pines is on Amazon Prime. It has Alfred Molina playing the detective, um, Armand Gamache. It is sent, it's set in Quebec. And so some of it um, is in French, but most of it is in English. And it's eight episodes, which sit as four two-parters. So you can sit down and watch like two hours of television and have like a full, a full story delivered. All the while, there's this larger narrative arc that's traveling right the way through all four stories. There are adaptations of uh, books by an author called Louise Penny and I have since purchased the first book as an audible book so I'll be listening into that and I'm quite excited about kind of diving into this diving into these series of books I think there's 18 of them so if I enjoy them then I've got a lot to listen to in 2023 <laughs> but I think one of the things that I love so much about this series is the detective because he's so kind and he's so compassionate he's so empathic um i just really really appreciated it and his relationship with his wife is so honest and affectionate and loving and uh, i just you know so often you watch one of these you know crime dramas and 
got, got that sort of gritty realism and the detective is, you know, tortured and has turned to vices and it's such a such a trope throughout detective fiction. And um this Armand Gamache, while he he does have his while he is haunted by the ghosts of his past, uh, he doesn't present them in the same way that you typically see them in that genre. So um, I really, really enjoyed that and I really enjoyed him and I want to see more Armand Gamache. So I'm really hoping that if I share it with all of you, you will all watch it too and they will commission a second season because I really want a second season. So if you could do that, that would be much appreciated. <laughs> The other things I'll be watching is my regular rewatches. So I rewatch Harry Potter in December in the lead up to Christmas. I watch The Hobbit Extended Editions uh, from Christmas, well, Boxing Day through to the through to Hogmanay. So at some point in this betwixt Miss Week. So I have already watched them. And after New Year, I watch the three extended editions of Lord of the Rings. And I like to begin every year with these particular stories of this of this epic quest. And I have done that for, well, we made a point of always seeing the movies when they were released on New Year's Day. So I think they came out 2004. So it's been almost 20 years. <laughs> Goodness me. So, um, so yes, I, I really enjoy making that a part of my a part of my annual ritual, so I've been doing that. There's something very comforting about returning to the same st set of characters, the same stories, the same, the same music. It's just I feel very well met by that, as I did when they brought out Rings of Power, because it felt as though they had extended these stories that I'm already very familiar and very fond of. So, so yes, I'm enjoying my rewatch. Uh, Something completely different. I saw on Kim Cran's Instagram feed that she had done a year spread using the archetypes deck. So that archetypes deck that I showed you just before, she had uh, basically shuffled her deck and she had, that's not a euphemism. <laughs> she had shuffled the deck and she had chosen you know, like just that one, for example, as her, what is that? The threshold. Oh, that's very appropriate for the first month. <laughs> so that's month one, that's January's card. And she had done the same for all the months of the year. And then she had chosen a 13th card um, as to sit in the centre. And that was her um, yearly theme. So I did that and I got some really interesting results and that's led me into doing a bit more journaling and a bit of self-reflection but I'm hoping to write a piece about that for my patrons and get that up in the next couple of weeks uh, so yeah once things have once things have settled down a bit from all of this Christmas and New Year chaos uh, I'm hoping to write a piece about that and I will share a little bit more about the cards that I drew and I'll also be sharing what goddess I received as my own goddess for the year and how she supported me to choose my word for the year, which is going to be presence. So, other Hogmanay plans, because Hogmanay is a big deal in Scotland. Hogmanay was always bigger in Scotland than it was, than, than Christmas was. It was our main, main event, really. And it has switched over, certainly, in, in um, more recent times. But it is still an important time of year, uh, this this changing of the guard from 2022 to 2023, the old year to the next. And so this year, uh, we're really excited because we're going to be spending it at the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society in the Vaults. And the Vaults is their venue in Leith. It's in one of the oldest buildings in the whole of Leith. It is a beautiful building. Uh, we're going to be piped in by Piper. <laughs> we're going to have a sit down dinner. We're going to have some very special whiskies, a little bit of bubbly. There's going to be a, a folk band playing a set. Uh, they're then going to perform for a Kaylee and then we're all going to see the bells in together. So 
so that's like that's really kind of pushing the boat out. It's a bit special. It's a bit different, but we we decided we were just going to go for it. You only live once, hey. <laughs> so that's our Hogmanay plans, and that's actually going to be the point at which I start to uh, record footage for the next podcast episode because I really want to be able to share this very special occasion with you too, because I think it will be special and it will be quite different from how other people are spending theirs. And so I want to be able to bring you along for the journey and uh, and yeah, share that with you too. So that's one of the pieces of footage that I'll be sharing with you at the end of January. But if you want to hear more about it in the meantime, I will be doing a sit and knit with me for patrons halfway through the month. Oh my goodness. Well, that ended up, I think, well, probably just about usual. I was going to say quite epic, but <laughs> probably no more epic than usual. <laughs> but I'm going to finish off with a poem and then wrap things up. I am really losing the light over here. I've, um, I'm very fortunate that I've got this beautiful lighting set up, uh, which is giving me some sort of consistency of light for recording the end of this. But I just want to share this poem with you. And then I'm going to release you into the rest of your, into the rest of your day and into the new year. How exciting. <laughs> so this poem is called Burning the Old Year and it's by no Naomi Shahab. Burning the Old Year. Letters swallow themselves in seconds. Notes friends tie to the doorknob, transparent scarlet paper, sizzle like moth wings, marry the air. So much of any year is flammable. Lists of vegetables, partial poems, orange swirling flame of days, so little is a stone. Where there was something and suddenly isn't, an absence shouts, celebrates, leaves a space. I begin again with the smallest numbers. Quick dance, shuffle of losses and leaves. Only the things I didn't do crackle after the blazing dies. <laughs> okay, my darlings, sending you all much, much love and wishing you all very happy Hogmanay and a wonderful beginning to 2023.